Hey guys, what's up? Today we got a triple integral. We're going to find the volume inside of a sphere of radius square root 5 outside a cone. Z equals 2 square root of x squared plus y squared and above the xy plane. So that region looks like this, but we want to stay outside the cone. So there's two approaches we can use. We can use, first of all, a cylindrical coordinates. That's going to be our first approach, cylindrical. And then part B, we can try spherical coordinates. So that'll be our second approach, spherical coordinates. So in cylindrical coordinates, what we're going to do is we're going to go by integrating R first. So if we integrate R first in cylindrical coordinates, what we're going to do is we're going to say that R is going to go from the cone out to the edge of the sphere. So that's going to be the easiest thing to do in cylindrical coordinates, is saying that r is going from, from the cone out to the sphere. All right? So we have to say, what are the sphere and the cone equations if we solve for r? So to solve the sphere equation for r, we get r equals the square root of 5 minus z squared. What about the cone? We take the cone, write it in cylindrical coordinates, that's z equals 2r. Well, if we solve for r again, that's r equals z over 2. Now, we've got the lower bound, or the inner bound, we could say, is the cone. So r is going to go from the cone, which is z over 2, up to, or out to, the sphere, the hemisphere, square root of 5 minus z squared. So that's the outer bound for r. 5 minus z squared, take the square root. Now we ask ourselves, like, for what values is r going from this cone out to this hemisphere? So for what values of z? So how far up does z go before we stop? So z is going to go from 0 up to this height here. So what is this height? We want to find the height for z. So the height for z is actually going to be determined by where the sphere and the cone intersect. So let's look at where the sphere and the cone intersect visually for a second. So if we look here at the graph, the sphere and the cone intersect uh, somewhere up here. So where the, the sphere and the cone intersect is where their equations are set equal to each other. So if we plug the cone equation maybe into the sphere equation, then we can get that height or that z value. So we're looking for a z value up here. So if I want to find that z value, what we can do is we can set z over 2 equal to square root of 5 minus z squared. And then square both sides, and we get z squared over 4 equals 5 minus z squared. Now all we do is solve for the positive z value, since this z value up here is positive, solve for the positive z value. Right? So we have z squared over 4 equals 5 minus z squared. So that tells us that z squared is equal to 20 minus 4z squared. Or we move that 4z squared over, that's 5z squared equals 20 which tells us z squared equals 4, or z equals 2. So it's just z equals 2. So that height is z equals 2. So z is going to go from 0 to 2. All the while, r is going from the cone out to the sphere. And it does that until we get to z equals 2. So this value is actually z equals 2. Right here where they intersect, z equals 2. So from 0 to 2 is where we're going from the cone out to the sphere. So for all those z values. Furthermore, this only set above the xy plane, so there's no real problem with theta going all the way around. So theta is going to take us all the way around the plane. And so now we've got our bounds. Let's set up our triple integral. So the volume is always a triple integral. 1 dv. So all we got to do is plug in our bounds. So this is integral 0 to 2 pi. 
for theta. Integral 0 to 2 for z, and integral the cone was z over 2, so square root 5 minus z squared, and 1, and then dv for cylindrical coordinates, dv we know is r, in this case, do r dz d theta. So r dr dz d theta. So we can integrate the d theta over here directly. There's no theta in the bounds or in the integrand anywhere. So I can pull the d theta over directly, integrate that, get 2 pi. So 2 pi integral 0 to 2. Integrate r dr, we get 1 half r squared, or 1 half r squared, going from z over 2 to square root 5 minus z squared, and then dz. Now the 1 half and the 2 are going to cancel, and we can say this is just pi times the integral 0 to 2. Now square the square root, we get just 5 minus z squared. Minus, square this, we get minus z squared over 4 dz. Finish out that integral, that's just a single integral. Trust that you can do that. That's going to come out to be 20 pi over 3. So 20 pi over 3. All right, and that's cylindrical coordinates integrating r first. If we integrated z first, well, it would actually present a little bit of a, a challenge because the upper bound for z changes at some particular radius. So we would go from 0 to the cone for some r values, and then for the other r values from that radius out to the radius of the sphere, square root of 5, we would have the upper bound being the sphere. So it's actually a little bit more challenging in that we have to set up two triple integrals to do z first in central coordinates. So now let's do it in spherical coordinates. All right, so now if we look at this solution in spherical coordinates, all we got to do is try to figure out the right bounds for rho, theta, and phi. So rho is the, the parameter that goes from the origin out to some surface. In this case, rho is going to go from the origin. So rho is going to go from the origin out to the sphere, the hemisphere. So rho in the each case is going from 0 out to the radius of the sphere, no matter what angle we're at for phi. So even right there at the edge of the cone, it's just parallel to the cone. So this cone is actually at a particular angle of phi. So rho is just going to go from 0 out to the radius of the sphere, which we already know is square root of phi. So rho is going from 0 to square root of 5. Theta is a pretty easy target. Theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. That's our angle in the xy axis that goes around this way, so theta. And then phi, phi is always the angle that goes from the z-axis down. So less than or equal to phi less than or equal to pi over 2. So what we have to do is we have to write this cone in spherical coordinates so we can figure out what this angle the cone makes with the z-axis. So I want to get this angle here so that I can go from the cone down to pi over 2. So the cone we said was z equals 2r. We just want to recall that z in spherical coordinates is rho cosine phi. And r is actually rho sine phi. So super useful relationship is that z equals rho cosine phi. And r, the radius from cylindrical coordinates, is actually equal to rho sine phi. And that's actually used in the derivation of the dv for spherical coordinates. But once we have this relationship, we have rho cosine phi equals 2 rho sine phi. I can solve for sine phi over cosine phi and get 1 half equals tan phi. So tangent phi. So actually phi for the cone, the angle the cone makes with the z-axis is arctan 1 half. So arctan 
one half. So the arctan one half is the lower bound of phi. So phi goes from arctan one half to pi over two. So we got our bounds. Now let's set up the triple interval. So our volume V is going to equal the interval zero to two pi. Interval arctan one half to pi over two for phi and then zero to square root of phi. One dv is rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. So this is our dv for spherical coordinates. So that's super important to remember your dv for spherical coordinates. So same thing here. There's no theta in the bounds. There's no theta in the integral. Pull the d theta over here directly. Integrate. You get 2 pi. So this is going to be 2 pi integral arc 10 1 half to pi over 2 sine pi d pi. So it's actually a nice product of the, there's a product in our integral. So it's nice, you can split it up this way, and then integrate rho, rho squared, rho squared d rho, you get rho cubed over 3, from 0 to square root of 5. And then, so integrate sine 5, you get negative cosine 5, from arc 10, 1 half, to pi over 2. And then plugging in these bounds, we're just going to get square root of 5 cubed is 5 square root of 5 over 3. Well, over 3 is already there. So 5 square root of 5 over 3. Now, all we need to do is evaluate cosine of pi over 2. Well, that's 0. So this is actually pretty easy. 2 pi times 0 plus. Now, this is the tricky part. From pre calculus, we need to find cosine of arctan of one half. So, to do this, we have to draw a triangle. So, the triangle satisfies the tangent being one half. So, then the hypotenuse is square root of five. So, then the cosine of that angle, alpha, is two over square root of five. So, cosine of alpha which is the arctan of 1 half, is 2 over 5. So this is going to be 2 pi times sorry, 2 over square root of 5. 2 over square root of 5 times 5 square root of 5 over 3. This is going to reduce to 20 pi over 3 as well. So we got the same answer regardless, and two very different ways of obtaining that answer. Hopefully this helps. That's all we do.